Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Zelnowski. I hope everyone's doing well this week. Today we're going to work on an activity I like to call a worry box. So everybody has worries and anxieties throughout their lives and what's important is how we deal with them and making sure that we're working through them in a positive manner and in a way that we resolve those worries and come out feeling better in the end. Um, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to show you how to make a worry box and then we'll talk a little bit more about how you can utilize one in your life. So for a worry box, you can use anything at home. You can use a Ziploc bag, you can use a paper bag, you can even use your bedside drawer. It doesn't necessarily have to be a box. Um, I got a small package, so that's the box that I'm using. Um, it still has tape on it. It's not perfect, and what you use doesn't have to be either, but also if you have a household that has a lot of arts and crafts supplies, feel free to make this as elaborate as you want because it's your box and you're going to be the one using it, so make sure it's something that makes you excited. I'm not the craftiest, and like I said, I don't have that many tools, so mine's going to be um, pretty plain, but that just goes to show that you can make it with very little materials or no materials at all really. Like I said, you can use your bedside table and put your worries in there. So I'm going to start with my box. I'm going to use this side because it doesn't have any writing on it. And some other materials I used is a paper towel um, roll and I cut off two ends and I'm going to make that my eye. So I'll put those on now. So that's one eye on, just taped it on. If you have glue, that's another great option. There's the other eye on. So as you can see, kind of looks like eyes. You can even take a marker. I only have a pen and sort of draw in a black pupil or you can use any color you want. Like I said, this is yours so you can be as creative or as generic as you want. Next is my nose. I had some index cards at my house, a couple different colors, so I just drew a circle um, and then cut out the circle on a green index card and then I did the same thing for the mouth. Just folding up some tape and putting that on. So this is what my worry box will look like. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of yours could put mine to shame and that's okay. Um, but now let's talk a little bit about what your worry box would be used for and how to make it something that improves um, the worries and anxieties that you have and also helps with communication between you and your parents. So what you do with a worry box is when something's bothering you and it's building up inside you, you write it down on a piece of paper and you put it into your worry box or your worry drawer or your worry ziplock bag. Just have a designated space for those worries to go. So I will give an example of something that maybe you guys could possibly worry about. So maybe you wrote down I 
I did bad on my meth math test and I feel like I'm gonna fail. So you put that down in your worry box, you fold it up, you put it inside, and you leave it there. That's a worry that's on your mind. It's something that's concerning you. And if you feel comfortable, you can say, you know, to your mom or your dad or your grandparent, whoever you feel comfortable with, um, you know, I had a worry today and they can ask you, do you feel comfortable with sharing that worry with me? And you can answer them. If the answer is yes, they could read, oh, are you concerned about how you did on your math test? Um, and you could say, yeah, I feel like I did really poorly and I feel like that might affect my grade and I might do bad in the class. Well, at that point, maybe your parent could help you work through that. Get onto your Skyward account. Look at what grade you got or maybe where your grades are. Um, and maybe you find out that you didn't do so great on that math test, but that your other grades are really good and you're not going to fail the class. You're actually doing a lot better than you thought you were. And it's a way of sort of extinguishing that worry and getting that out of, out of your head. So at that point, if you feel like that worry has come and it's gone, you can take it out of your worry box and rip it up and put it in the garbage and move on from that worry. Um, unfortunately, we do know that not all worries can be worked through that easily. Um, for example, maybe you have a sick, a sick grandparent or a sick family member and that's a worry you've written down and, and put into your box and that might be something that stays there a little longer depending on how long um, that worry sticks around. But by sharing that worry with family members and being able to talk with them about it, talk through that worry with them, and um, you know, feel supported by the people around you, that can really help help and lessen the worry, even if the worry itself doesn't go away entirely. Um, so that's the purpose of the worry box, to just sort of get all of your feelings out, all your thoughts out, and put them into one place so they're not just all stuck up in your head and um, it's a really good way to start feeling better about some things. So I hope this is helpful helpful for you. Um, please email me some of your worry boxes if you do try them. My email is mzelnoski at aasdcat.com um, and I would forward any of your worry boxes on to your counselor as well if I get some from different schools. I hope you continue to stay safe and have a great week. Bye.